How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? It is Saturday morning. It's 1140. We have yet to have anybody come in the store. Uh, so needless to say, dealership life has been pretty boring and uneventful lately. Uh, we've talked about it in the past. We know that obviously prices are up, inventories are down. People are used to this now. It's been seven, eight, nine months since we started having these uh, these issues. So a lot of people are just sitting tight. You know, they're not buying anything right now if they don't absolutely have to. A lot of our business is being done basically on phone, email, stuff like that. But as we get stuff in, we do follow up on our clients and so we sell some cars. So like this Equinox I have sold, it's gonna go uh, Saturday, ne not today obviously, next Saturday when I come back from vacation. This is an LT model uh, with the confidence convenience package and a sunroof, which is a must have. The customer definitely wanted to have a sunroof. Um, so that's sold. We do have two available Equinoxes here. We have a Premier model and we have an LT with confidence and convenience. We've got a bunch of Silverados in. Some of these are the same as we've seen in past videos. Uh, this 22 LTD RST has been here for quite a while. No action really on that one. This is a 6.2 liter Redline edition, a uh, real nice truck. I actually had this sold at one point, but uh, the gentleman had canceled. So that's still here and available. We got a new body LT crew cab with the short bed. This is the new body, the new interior, you know, all that sort of stuff, which is, you know, just a very nice truck. Everyone that sees it and gets in that new interior really loves it, uh, you know, which is to be expected. Another new body, uh, 2FL model here with the 2.7 liter turbo. We got an LTD Custom. Got a Tahoe, sold, just hasn't been picked up yet. Another Tahoe, which is sold, hasn't been picked up yet. And then we got a bunch of Traverses. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six Traverses, um, all but two of those are sold. Uh, they just got here recently. So we gotta do some pre-delivery inspections on them, get them ready to go, and uh, get the customers here to, to pick them up. So not too much as far as inventory. Actually, I have a Traverse in the back. Let me show you this. This here is a 2022 uh, 3LT Traverse, right? So it's the LT leather. Uh, nothing else added other than uh, other than just being a 3LT. Uh, it does have black wheels, as you can see here. Now those wheels, we actually had a, a vendor of ours paint. So they didn't come with those wheels, but the customer wanted all black wheels. And this is the least expensive way to get it done is just to have the ones that are on the vehicle painted. Uh, they look real good. And it gives you that nice uh, stealth blacked out look that everybody seems to like right now. Currently in our body shop, we have a Lexus RX350 with a blown out front end, a Jeep Wrangler with a blown out front end, a Chrysler Pacifica with a blown out front end, a Subaru Crosstrek with a blown out front end, an Acura MDX with a blown out front end, a Nissan Rogue with a blown out front end, and the Chevy Trax here that was rear ended. If you can't tell yet, this video is just gonna be completely random. Uh, just really a conversation that I'm gonna have with you while I walk around the parking lot. Now, one thing I did do was I pulled up two LTZ Silverados uh, to kind of compare the two. Now, we're not doing like a real comparison. We're just gonna do a site comparison. Looking at a 1500 versus a 2500, look at the size difference between these two trucks. I mean, the 2500 is just massive. You know, Chevrolet did a great job that you know they made this truck look so large well they made it so large it is so large which is what you want you want a big rig right you want a, a big massive hd truck and you can really see the difference on how high the hood lines are you can see the difference on how high where the mirrors actually start where they're attached to the truck you can see the difference on the wheel wells you know how how much taller this 2500 hd is uh really really just an awesome awesome truck uh you know these both being ltz's they have a real nice look i know a lot of people don't like the chrome i don't mind it on these you know like it looks it looks strong to me i mean you got the, the lower portion of the bumper chrome the lower accents where the fog lights are is chrome the front grille you know on the hd you got the big chevrolet across the front on the 1500 you got the bow tie there uh you know just very nice looking uh nice looking trucks now the one benefit to the 1500 series is you do get the new interior Whereas in the 2500 series, you do not, um, you know, so it's nice to have that updated, refreshed interior compared to what we've had in these trucks in the past. Even though, you know, the interior on this, although it's not the flashiest, it's not the biggest screen, you know, it definitely, uh, it's definitely nice. It gets the job done. You know, it's going to get you A to B and it's going to do it with all the same functions that you would have in the other truck for the most part. You know, it just looks different. 
This 2500 does have the Duramax 6.6 .6 liter diesel engine in it attached to the Allison transmission. Uh, what's nice is you do have a nice easy access port right here for your uh, engine block heater. You know, you just plug in with the supplied cord and you can keep that vehicle warmed up if you're in a cold weather climate. However, uh, in most climates here in the States, you probably don't need that and you still get remote start. So I could press lock, hit this button and start this truck up in a matter of seconds. Now, the reason I can do that is because this truck has glow plugs in it that heat up to 1800 degrees in three seconds. So what I just learned in the training I was at the other day, if you're in 20 below weather or above, you can remote start this diesel engine, even if you're not plugged in with the engine block heater. Because again, those glow plugs are gonna heat up to 1800 degrees in three seconds. You know, when we remote start, we press lock and we hold the start button for literally about three seconds. So in that three seconds, it gets heated up enough that we can have remote start. When you turn your remote start on, it's gonna turn on your, you know, your front defrost, your, your heated rear window, your heated seats, your heat, all that sort of stuff to get the vehicle very comfortable for you. So when you come out 10 minutes later, you know, and it is 20 below, uh, hopefully the truck will be a little warmed up for you. This Duramax 6.6 .6 liter uh, diesel just looks massive inside the engine bay here. I mean, they really, uh, they, it looks like they really crammed it in, but they got the job done. Now this engine pumps out 445 horsepower, 910 pound feet of torque. Now that's not the best in class as far as the torque number. There are other manufacturers out there with higher torque numbers. However, this is all about how you put the torque to the road. And the way this truck is set up, you actually achieve your 910 uh, pound feet of torque in first gear. So like when you're pulling a heavy load and you're launching off the line and you need that power then, you're getting it then, which is awesome. Now, one of the things they taught us in the training the other day, and I'm forgetting the, the name of what it was called. It was something about a, um, like a variable spool valve or something to that effect on the turbo. So basically the turbo, depending on what you're asking the truck can do, can literally adjust on demand to either give you more power to spool it faster or less to just cruise in a sense. So the way they explained it was, let's say you're like holding a garden hose, right? And if you're, you're holding it, just letting that garden hose flow out, it just has a certain level, of, a certain volume of water. Now you put your thumb over that hose, you're getting the same volume of water, but it's spraying out with a lot more pressure. That's essentially what this truck is doing in the turbo. So it's basically channeling the, 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 the power of that turbo into less chambers. This way you spool it up faster and you achieve your power quicker. I think I got that right. Speaking of power, it's all about, you know, numbers and what you can put on the road as far as your performance in towing, right? So on every Chevrolet vehicle here now since 2022, you're gonna see a little label inside the door here, which is gonna tell you exactly what your tow rating is. So if we look, this truck, the way it's set up, can tow 18,500 pounds with a conventional trailer and your max payload in the bed, 3149, or your max payload for the truck, I should say, uh, 3149, 3,149 pounds. This is extremely important, and this was a great idea to put this decal here on the truck and on all the trucks, because depending on how the truck is set up, that's gonna determine what the truck can do. So for instance, two wheel drive versus four wheel drive, double cab versus crew cab, you know, engine options, the, depending on the weight of the truck and these different setups of uh, engine transmission and drivetrain, your payload and your towing can be different. So when you're looking at a specific truck, you can tell immediately what that actual specific truck can do. So let's go over here to the 1500. We'll open up the door here. We'll check out the label on this one. Make sure these don't hit here. All right, so if we look at this one here, we have a uh, conventional trailer uh, tow rating of 9,200 pounds and max payload of 1,576. Again, that's specific to this actual truck. Uh, very good idea that GM had there. Now this 1500 LTZ that we have right here is the 5.3 liter V8 that everybody knows and loves. It's a V8, it's a truck, you want a V8, right? It's got 383 pound feet of torque. But you know what has more? This 2.7 liter turbo high output. This one puts out 430 pound feet of torque. I mean, that's more than the V8, right? And, and numbers don't lie. And not only the numbers not lie, it's how you apply those numbers to the ground. With the turbo and the way this truck is designed, you're actually achieving your peak torque at a lower RPM than you are when you're driving the 5.3 liter V8. So basically what that means is you have more power off the line. You can tow things off the line and you can accelerate and you can do essentially the same job that you can here in the eight cylinder. And you'll save a couple dollars uh, maybe at the pump and you'll also save a little bit as far as um, cost of the actual engine itself. And how do they do that? Technology. 
you take the engine, you take the turbo, you take the transmission, you take the rear end, you put it all together, and it's just how does the power get applied to the road, you know? And they do a very nice job. Basically, what we learned in training the other day is that they added a lot of metal to this vehicle. You know, they beefed this engine up. They beefed the crankcase up, they beefed the pistons up, they did all that sort of stuff. They're using a lot of diesel technologies, which are very durable and reliable technologies in this turbo inline four-cylinder truck engine. You know, so it definitely, uh, it definitely can do the job. If we take a look at our tow rating, let's see what we can tow in this one. Now this is a crew cab uh, short bed, just like the one we were uh, we were just looking at. And this can tow 9,000 pounds. So basically 200 pounds less than you can tow in the V8. And the payload on this truck is actually a lot more. It's 1,892 pounds. So because it's a lighter vehicle, I guess the way it's optioned out, engines, that sort of thing, you can actually add a little bit more into it and still safely drive down the road. One other thing I learned in training, which I never knew this before, and even the previous 2.7 liter turbo had this technology in it, not just the new high output version for 2022, but they have active thermal managing, which I never even knew was a thing. So I must've missed that in one of my tests. But basically what you can do in this vehicle, what this vehicle can do is it can channel coolant to different parts of the engine based on how the engine is running. So for instance, you have four cylinders. If cylinder three is getting hot based on the workload, it can channel coolant to that to that cylinder. It can channel it to cylinder four, cylinder one, cylinder two, and it can do it real time based on what you're asking this engine to do and how the engine's operating in its environment to keep it cool. The cooler engine, more power, more efficiency. Let's compare the back of these trucks. I mean, look at the height of the bed rail on that 2500 HD versus the uh, 1500 crew cab here. Now, obviously this one is the short box. The 2500 HD has a standard box. But again, it's just cool to see the difference in size between these two vehicles, you know, and how much, uh, how much more beefed up and bigger that 2500 HD looks than the 1500. Nice trucks, real nice. Both currently available. So if you're in the market for one of those, as of uh, the posting of this video, those two trucks are available for sale. Uh, we're gonna continue with our random video here of uh, of basically no planning. I'm just walking around, uh, walking around chatting with you. Onto the used car lot where you'll notice, I mean, half of our front line is empty. Uh, this is a problem. I mean, this is a real problem. You know, right now it's not all that easy to get vehicles at a good price that you can recondition and resell. So I'm assuming that's part of the problem of why we have so few vehicles. Uh, we just got this in, a new tracks. Well, not a new tracks, a new used tracks to us. This is a 2019 white LT. Nice vehicle. Everything else here is pretty much the same as it's been. We got a couple of Malibus in and we got this nice Silverado uh, double cab. And it does have a custom exhaust on it. I don't know what brand it is, but the other day I started up to park here and I immediately knew that something was different because it did not sound stock. Let's take a look. Whatever it is, it looks like it's uh, a little rusted. What does that say? I can't see. Let me get the key, I'm gonna start it up. Three seventeen A. Alright, let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. So what do you think? Did that sound good? I think it sounds pretty good. I was able to get underneath there. It is a Flowmaster exhaust. It's stamped Flowmaster on that muffler. Uh, so I don't know what series Flowmaster is, but it definitely gives that truck a nice sound. Uh, now, I want to talk to you real quick about pet peeves. This uh, tree here is a pet peeve of mine. And I should have trimmed it back in uh, the winter when I was going to, because it just looks like a big bush. And it really blocks your visibility when you're coming in and out a lot. And as you can see here, I mean, it's just a regular tree. There's a tree trunk inside there. And all these little branches just branch off from the very base of the tree. So if we took all these lower portions off and came up to like the middle, it would actually look like a tree, like one of these here. So maybe one day uh, we can get that done. 
I actually already trimmed this one myself. Now, back in 2012, they built this whole new building. They redid the whole parking lot. They redid the grass here in the bushes and they planted these trees. Uh, this tree, however, was not planted here. There was no tree. This is just a weed that since 2012 grew into a tree, I guess. It just was never chopped down and it grew into a full blown tree. Well, not long ago, this tree uh, was completely engulfing our 240 watt charger here. So I went, oh wow, look at those bugs. Oh, that's a problem. I came in here and uh, I cut all these branches down to just expose the 240 watt charger and make it a little bit easier for me to plug in my personal 2019 Chevrolet Bolt. Those are really my only two pet peeves at the moment, other than the fact that we don't have any inventory to sell and the car business right now is just a shambles of a situation, but we'll get through it, we'll get out of it. Actually, next week I'm on vacation, so I'm gonna take the week off and enjoy it, have some fun and come back in the end of July and uh, you know, put the pedal down and try to, try to really sell some units. Right now it is the 16th of the month, I only have four cars sold and I have another four orders that should be inbound. I thought they would be here last month. They didn't show. I, they're probably not gonna show this month. So uh, a little slow month for me, but whatever, vacation, focus on uh, having fun with the family. And then uh, we'll come back, we'll get back to work at the end of the month. So I'll probably have a couple of videos out. I got a couple of bolt ideas I might do uh, while I'm away. And I will see you, um, you know, in a week for dealership life. Oh yeah? Alright, cool. Have any customers come in? What's it? No. No? Mm -hmm.